until the lion learns how to read and write. Every story will glorify the hunter. This is an African proverb that I know that every African out there knows it. It's time for us to unite as one Africa and help change the narratives of Mama Africa. It's time for each and every African to be an ambassador for the continent. Wherever you find yourself right now, if you look like me, you're an African. So it's your duty, it's your responsibility to represent the motherland wherever you are. I'm so happy today, I don't know why, because a sister is telling our own story in Accra, Ghana. This is a black library and it's just incredible. Like, I mean, I'm here already and what I'm seeing, I feel like I just can't wait to have a conversation with this beautiful sister who left the UK, came to Ghana and established something beautiful like this. It's time for us to support our own. So I'm here to support this sister. So if you're watching me for the first time, my name is Mr. Ghana, baby, the annoying village boy from Ghana. If today is your first time on this channel, please do me a favor, subscribe and like the video to be part of this family. Let's hit the 500,000 subscribers by the end of this month. Come with me, let's go talk to this beautiful sister. Aya, Maya. Make Africa home again. Africa, Africa home again, baby. Make Africa home again. Africa, Africa home again, baby. Africa home again. Hi. Hi, welcome to the Library of Africa and the African Diaspora. Thank you so much. I've heard a lot about you and I really want to talk to you. I'd like to talk to you too. Are you ready for me? I'm ready for you. We need to sit down and talk, yeah? Sit down. Thank you. My sister. Hello. <laughs> Do I still have to introduce myself? No, I think I know who you are. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So no need of introduction. No. Yeah? So which means that you have to introduce yourself. Yes. Who are you? My name is Sylvia Arthur and um, I was born and raised in London, but I'm of Ghanaian heritage. Obviously, I'm Ghanaian and I've been living in Ghana since June 2017 and I'm the founder of this library. Wow. You're born in the UK. Yes. Born raised. and raised. Born and raised. I didn't, come to yes, I didn't come to Ghana for the first time until my 20s. <laughs> What brought you to Ghana in the first place? Um, do you know, I just finished university. It was turn of millennium almost, and I was looking for something different, and I felt there was something about my identity that was missing. And my mum had started coming to Ghana quite a lot, and I was wondering, like, why is she going to Ghana? She'd never spoken about moving to Ghana, never spoken about, like, living in Ghana. And so I was interested in as to what she was coming back for. Mm -hmm. And so I came myself for the first time in 1999, and I realized, OK, now I understand what she's coming back for, um, because I just felt at peace. I felt like these are my people. And yeah, I understood in the moment why she was coming you, back. You, you felt at peace. What are you saying? You're living in the UK. You're not having peace during that time? I definitely had peace, but I think it's more about knowing who you are. And when I came to Ghana, there were certain things about my identity and who I was that suddenly made sense, that didn't make sense to me when I was in the UK. Now, obviously, when you're brought up in a Western education system, the things that you're told about Africa is not the reality of how things are. What are the things that they told you about Africa? Oh, you know, I mean, obviously, we're talking about the 80s. There was famine in Ethiopia. There was war, you know, in certain countries of Africa. So when we were growing up, we were always teased about, oh, you know, eating bananas and, you know, you can't, you can't read, you can't write Africans are backward people. And then obviously you come to Africa, you come to Ghana and you see that that's not actually how things are. And it's, a, it's an awakening. And it's not that I didn't know that that's how things are. It's just that I think it's different when you come and see it and experience it for yourself. Um, you moved to Ghana in 2017. Yes. Can you tell me why you moved to Ghana? Yeah, so um, in my day job, I work with the European Commission. Um, we just had Brexit in the UK, the Brexit referendum, and, you know, things were not looking too good, let's just say. They weren't looking too good economically, socially, culturally. The UK was totally changing. And so, you know, where else but Ghana? By that time, I already had, like, an established connection. I'd been coming and going, you know, maybe twice a year at that point. And so when it came time to consider a move, yeah, Ghana was the natural 
a natural choice. And how has the experience been like so far? It's been interesting. <laughs> it's uh, been interesting. You know, the way you said it's been interesting. <laughs> you have to tell us something more, you know. Yeah, like, how interesting has it yeah, been uh, staying going to be? I mean, honestly, I didn't think I would last three years. So now I've been here for three years. Wow. Um, thank you. It, it's just been, it's been a challenge, I'll have to say. It's not as easy as people think to just pick up mm. and, you know, go and move to Ghana. I think the most difficult thing for me was a kind of adjustment in culture and pace of life. And so, for example, in the UK, I can maybe do three things a day, four things a day. I can go to East London, South London, West London, and I'm from North London. In Ghana, in Accra, Honestly, if I'm going to a shaman where we have another library, that's all I can do in that one day. Because a shaman, it's not that it's far, but the roads are, you know, not the best. And so, yeah, it's just an adjustment of, I think, expectations and knowing that this is not the UK or it's not America, it's Ghana. And I think people come here thinking that they're going to get a lot from the country. And yes, you will. But I think it's about you giving back to the country as much as you taking from the country. And that's where people sometimes go wrong. Uh, which means that I need to um, tell you to advise your fellow brothers and sisters who are looking for where to visit the continent. Yes. What are the things that they need to be ready for? Like, you know, it's, they are just moving from one continent to another. Yes. So what are the things that they need to be ready for? Um, I think it's as I say, you need to be very realistic about what you're coming to. Mm. And, you know, I think one thing is that maybe certain little luxuries such as you know electricity and water you'll have to buy a generator maybe that's going to be money um you know all those kind of things that people are may may not be used to i think you need, really need to have like a real reality check mm. and um you know let's forget about that for now and uh, you know the reason why i'm here yeah because I've got this beautiful library that's Absolutely. dedicated to Everyone African writers. It to me and I was like, you know what, I need to look for you. Yes, and how do you find it? Like, this is beautiful and incredible because Thank I, you. I never knew even the person behind it is young. And this well, one, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, know, I know, I'm not saying you're too young, but I mean, like, it's not... I look young, that's good. Let's no, just, yeah. you look young. Yeah. You know, let's, let them take it like that. I just want to know, what really inspired you, yeah, to start this beautiful library in Ghana? Yeah, I mean, honestly, sometimes I can't believe that I've done it because I walk in here and it is such a beautiful space. But, you know, I've always been a reader since a very young age. That's one thing that my parents, especially my, my dad, who's no longer with us, but he was also a reader. And so I think that's where I got it from. And he was a collector of vinyl. So when I was really young, my mum would take me to a shopping mall and all the children would be playing and I just want to go to the bookshop. So I've always been interested in reading. I had all these books lying around at home because I've collected them over the years. And what happened was is that I got a job in Brussels in 2010. And that's really when I started to collect. And so it got to the point where I ran out of space in my apartment in Brussels for my books. I ran out of space in my apartment in London for my books. And my mum at that time was living in Kumasi. Yeah. And so I would ship the books back to her house in Kumasi. And then every time I would go and see her, I would think, wow, look at all these books that are not being read when there are people who could be using them. It's such a waste. So it was back in 2011 that I had the idea for the library. But obviously, I moved here in 2017 in June. And then we opened the first library in December 2017. So it's been a journey. <laughs> it's been a journey. Yeah. But um, this library, I think it's a library of... Africa and the African diaspora. Is it only black books in here? Yes, 95% uh, of the books in here are by African and African descended authors. So when we say African descended, we mean obviously African, African Caribbean, African American, black British, black European, anyone for, who is African descended in the mm. world. Mm. Um, yeah, we have their books. What we have here is the total opposite of a library that you would have in the Western world, okay. in that the focus here is totally on African writers and African um, descended writers. Mm. So this shelf here is all African writers, and we have books by 41, or books from countries, from 41 countries of Africa's 54. So we have books here. And then this middle section here is Ghanaian writers. Obviously, we're in Ghana, so we have to highlight our beautiful, uh, prolific writers here. Really quickly, here we have African Caribbean writers from um, various islands across the Caribbean. Here we have Black British and European. Yes. This section here is poetry. And then here we have politics. As you can African, see, African politics, African yeah. politics predominantly, but also diaspora politics. So you can see there Stokely Carmichael, Malcolm X, etc., etc. Here we have um, books about the craft of writing um, from a black perspective and an African perspective. 
Here we have Afrocentric books. And you can see we've had some famous visitors <laughs> to the library and stuff. My, my, my picture has to be here. It's going to be there. It's going to be there. Trust me. <laughs> it's going to be there. And then here is the only shelf that is not African descended writers. This is world writers. We call this world writers, mm, okay. which is the opposite of when you go into a library in the Western world, there would be a tiny section that's called black writers, which mm. wouldn't even get to here. So, you know, that's that. And then here it's African American writers. And you can see that we have everybody from the great, such as Maya Angelou. Maya Angelou. Exactly. And Maya. My name is what am I? Oh, yeah. So there you go. So, I've got my book in <laughs> you've here. got your book. You've got your writer. Exactly. Your grandmother, <laughs> Maya Angelou. Um, and then very quickly, here we have like a little archive uh, container, which has books in here that you won't find anywhere else oh, in wow. Africa or even the world. So signed um, Kwame Nkrumah, autographed Kwame Nkrumah. And then the whole collection of Ai Kweama first edition, some of them signed, some of them with letters. So, okay. Yeah. And so what we have here is this the is children's us. library. And in this library, we have books for children up until the age of about 16. And they are mostly by African and African descended authors. And this is a really important shelf here. So I don't know if you've heard of Emmanuel Fossi Yabois, the Ghanaian, disabled Ghanaian uh, athlete. That's a book about him. Um, Schomburg from the United States, from Puerto Rico in the United States, Solway by Lu Peter Nyong'o, obviously Mandela here from South Africa, Wangarai Mathai from Kenya. So all of Africa is represented in this children's library and all of the diaspora as well. That's so even footballers, as you can see, <laughs> Lukaku, Lukaku, Venus and Serena Williams, they're all here. They're all here. And what children's library have you been into where they have a portrait of Malcolm X <laughs> or Alice Walker? So, yeah. This is new and I feel like we need to promote it more so that a lot of Ghanaian kids will definitely come in. And not even Ghanaian kids, but someone like you who is so blank about <laughs> African history. But it's not just you. I find that a lot of um, Ghanaians, and not just Ghanaians, probably Africans are mm -hmm. blank about their history as well. But you have to think about what our education is and what we've been taught. Even though, obviously, we have been independent for 63 years, you know, our education system is totally biased towards the Western education system. And this is why you are important in here. So, you know what, just tell me, uh, who are the people that you are looking forward to come and visit your library? Yeah, so we welcome all kinds of people here. I should say that you pay to be a member of this particular library. And this library you pay, we have two different memberships. We have 600 Ghana cities a year, which is 50 cities a month. Or we have 1,200 a year, which is 100 cities a month. And the difference is between the number of books you can borrow. So for 600 cities, you can borrow two books at a time. For 1,200, you can borrow four books at a time. But you can also use all, all the facilities in this library. Um, but we also have three free community libraries, which is very important to say. Okay. So we have a library in Ashaiman at the Gemstar School. We have one in Kumawu in the Ashanti region. And we have one in Ensutem in the Eastern region. And they're completely free. And before coronavirus, we used to go, especially to a shaman, every second Saturday and do reading and creative play activities with the children. And that's definitely the best part of the work. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for taking me around. No problem. And now you need to answer these questions for me. Yes. You've been in Ghana for three good years. Yeah. Do you believe that Africa is the future? I do. Be I think it's the present and the future. So, yes, definitely. I mean, if you look at the way that the world is going and the way that people are thinking now, especially with the Black Lives Matters protest, etc., a lot of people are thinking about Africa in terms of relocation. And I think that's a good thing, obviously, you know. <laughs> relocation? Yes. So you believe that Africa is home? I believe that Africa is home, yes. So yes, definitely. Can you tell your fellow brothers and sisters out there it's time to make Africa home again? I definitely think it's time to make Africa home again. I think, first of all, come explore. Try to spend a significant amount of time here your first time. Like, don't come for two weeks, three weeks, because that's not enough to do anything. You need to come for at least three months, I think, in the beginning and work out, you know, who you are, where you are, etc. Because I'll tell you something from the beginning. It was really disorientating for me in the beginning, yeah. walking around and seeing all these billboards with black people on it. So, for example, I'd see a billboard for Nivea or for, you know, a car, and there'd be a black person in it. I'd be like, wow, why is there a black person on that billboard? Like, Nivea is really doing well. And then I remember, oh, I'm in a black country. I'm in Africa, so why shouldn't there be a black person on the billboard? So I think, you know, you really need to take time to readjust and that takes at least three months. So come for an extended period of time if you can and then work out where it's best for you. It might not be the city, it might not be Accra, it could be outside of the big cities and, 
yeah, explore and find your, find your base. Sylvia, there's something you didn't tell me. What's that? How do people find you in here? Okay, so the best way to find us is to follow us on Instagram and Facebook. So on Instagram, we're at LOTAD, that's L-O-A-T-A-D underscore org. And so find us on Instagram, find us on Twitter, and also on Facebook. If you just search Library of Africa and the African Diaspora, we will come up. Um, also, I should say we do lots of events here related to African and diaspora literature. So spoken word, film screenings, book readings, talks and debates, music performances. So if you follow us on any of our social media channels, you can find out what's happening and when. And, and I've seen it's not just first floor, you also have a second floor. Exactly. So upstairs... It's, it's also a library? No, so upstairs actually is a residential space. So oh, we wow. rent out the three bedrooms upstairs, which are all named after Ghanaian writers, by the way. And so if anybody wants to come and stay with us and have a unique travel experience here in Ghana, here in Accra, definitely um, DM me or um, message me and um, I can give you the details about renting upstairs. Thank you so much. I'm definitely going to spend a night here. You should. Because I have a lot to You've read got a lot of reading to do. Exactly. <laughs> Thank so have so I. Thank you. Thank you. And if you are new to the channel, my name is Mr. Ghana Baby. Don't forget to like the video, please. And um, share to support the sister's business. You know, over time, we need to support one another. And don't forget to subscribe and be part of this awesome family. Let's hit the 500,000 by the end of this month. Bro, they tried to say that my black was